Welcome everybody. Uh, this is Hoon from Pittsburgh Prep. We're located on 134 South Highland Avenue, Pittsburgh, PA. And if you have any questions before or after this little presentation, you can email us at info at pittsburghprep.com. All right, let's get on with the show. Today, we are going to be talking about clauses, clauses, and phrases. Clauses and phrases aren't necessarily tested entirely or directly on your SAT or ACT exam. However, they are an integral part of your understanding what the writing or the English section is about. So let's begin. So two things, clauses and phrases. So let's talk about clauses first. What are clauses? Well, clauses are sentences uh, with, clauses are some sentences with a subject and Verb. Simple enough, right? There are two types of clauses. There is what is what we call an independent clause. Independent clauses are sentences that can stand alone. And there are what we call dependent clauses. And as you can imagine, dependent clauses are clauses that stand sentences that cannot stand alone. So let's take a look at a example. If we said something like, Marcus decided to jump on the train. This happens to be an independent clause. It's an independent clause. Marcus decided to jump on the train. It stands alone because I can come up to you and I can just tell you that Marcus decided to jump on the train. And you would not question that sentence. There's nothing wrong with this. A dependent clause, however, would be something like while his mom while his mom waved goodbye. This sentence here, while his mom waved goodbye, can't stand by itself. If I just came up to you and I said, hey, uh, Mark, uh, while his mom waved goodbye, You'd be like, what are you talking about, Hoon? That doesn't quite make sense. So what we need is we need to have a independent clause with a dependent clause together. So if I were to put these two sentences together, Marcus decided to jump on the train while his mom waved goodbye. You'll notice that we have an independent clause here, Marcus decided to jump on the train paired with a dependent clause while his mom waved goodbye. In fact, in the English language, sentences can be constructed with many dependent clauses. You can have a dependent, independent, dependent clause structure. You could have an independent and independent clause structure even. But you, what you cannot have is you cannot have a dependent and dependent clause structure. Then you would just have something that just doesn't make sense. Another way of telling uh, a dependent clause apart is subordinating conjunctions like while. While is what's called a subordinating conjunction. Because if I were to take away this conjunction while, his mom waved goodbye would be just an independent clause. But if I put in the word while, that makes this into a dependent clause. So once again, a dependent clause has subordinating conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions are words like while, because, although, yet, what, if, and so. Okay, so now that we have a pretty good grasp of what clauses are all about, let's talk about phrases. Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. Well, what are phrases? Well, Phrases essentially are defined as words that do not contain subject verb pairs to form a clause. That's it. Another way of thinking about it is if it's not a clause, then it's probably a phrase. Apart from singular words and such, everything else is going to be either a clause or a phrase in the English language. And there's about four types. Well, let's talk about five types. 
There's actually many more types than just five types of phrases, but the only five types that we are going to discuss here today are going to be the ones that are the most relevant for your standardized exams. So let's really understand these five types of phrases so that we can achieve a higher understanding of the English language in terms of clauses and phrases. So let's start with the first type of phrase. That's called a prepositional phrase. A prepositional phrase is exactly that. It's a phrase that consists of a preposition. So if we have a sentence such as this, a strong odor emanated from the damp forest. We know from our previous episode that a strong odor emanated represents the subject and the verb. Part of the predicate here is emanated from the damp forest consists of a prepositional phrase. From is a preposition. From the damp forest is a prepositional phrase. It's a group of words, remember? From the damp forest is a prepositional phrase. So I can just kind of hide that up. So the prepositional phrase in the sentence is from the damp forest. From is a preposition. Forest is the object of the preposition. And damp is the modifier of the object. Another way of saying this is, what kind of forest was it? Well, it was a damp forest. And what was it doing? Well, an odor was emanating from this damp forest. So that's why this is called the prepositional phrase. A prepositional phrase has three parts. It has a preposition, the object of the preposition, and a modifier. In this instance, that modifier would be damp. Okay. It doesn't have to have all three of these at all times, but it's good for us to know. Take a good note of this. Okay. All right, so now that we have an understanding of the first type, Let's take a look at the second type. The second type is called an infinitive phrase. An infinitive phrase is a phrase that consists of an infinitive form of a verb. So let's take a read through this. Jamal decided to keep his kidneys today. Good job, Jamal. Jamal is a subject, decided is the verb. To keep is the infinitive form of the verb. To keep. And to keep his kidneys today is the infinitive phrase. Just remember that. It's just good for us to know infinitive phrases. They don't have any particular purpose except for the fact that it is a form of the verb that you can use to construct a sentence. All these things are really good for us to know because when we construct essays, whether you construct the essays for the SATs or for school, you now have a variety of different types of phrases that you can utilize. The third type of phrase is what we call an appositive phrase, an appositive phrase. An appositive phrase is a phrase that consists of a group of words that seeks to expand another word, potentially define another word. More generally, they tend to act as adjectives. Let's take a look. Millions of students on their way to campus felt betrayed by the system. When you read a sentence like this, we first take a look at it and then we can say to ourselves, ah, what is the clause? The independent clause here is millions of students felt betrayed by the system. That is what the author wants us to take away. Millions of students felt betrayed by the system. This group of words on their way to campus, surrounded by these two commas, are actually not really necessary as part of the sentence. They are what's called the appositive phrase. The appositive phrase here is surrounded by two commas. And in fact, most appositive phrases are always surrounded by commas. They're extraneous to the sentence. And they always describe the sentence further. In this instance, millions of students on their way to campus. What were the students doing? Well, the students were on their way to campus. So it describes the students further 
even though the clause states that they were they felt betrayed by the system. So once again, a positive phrase is surrounded by commas and they act to modify a word further. Okay? That's in a positive phrase. Keep that in your mind. Looking at a another Type. The fourth type here that we're going to discuss is called a gerund phrase. A gerund phrase utilizes a gerund in a sentence, like so. Waiting for the bus is the worst thing possible. The verb in the sentence is not waiting. Many of us might think that's true, but it's not. Remember, in a previous episode, we talked about gerunds. Waiting, in fact, is the gerund. Is here is the verb. What? in this sentence was the worst thing possible. Well, waiting is the worst thing possible. The bus isn't the worst thing possible. Waiting for the bus is the worst thing possible. Therefore, waiting here is acting as a noun. It's a verb in the present participle form acting as a noun or the subject conjugating the verb is that creates this entire independent clause. Waiting is the worst thing possible. Therefore, when you have a verb with a present participle form acting as a noun, that's called a gerund, and the gerund phrase in the sentence is here, waiting for the bus. This is the gerund sentence, waiting for the bus. Okay? Let's take a look at our last clause, uh, last phrase. And the last phrase is a little different, and that's called a participial phrase. A participial phrase actually has uh, two types. This is the last of the phrases that we'll discuss today. A participial phrase has two forms. It has what's called a past participle form, and it also has what's called a present participle form. So let's take a look at these two, two forms of the participial phrase. Let's take a look at the past participle form for now. Here is an independent clause. Santa Claus decided, Santa Claus decided he will no longer deliver presents. Santa Claus decided he will no longer deliver presents. Okay, great. Santa Claus is the subject, decided is the verb, right? He will no longer deliver presents. Okay, great. So I understand all of this. Independent clause. If we add a phrase to this, worked to death. Worked to death, comma, acts as a phrase that acts to, to expand the idea of what Santa Claus is like. Otherwise known as an adjective. Worked to death is an adjective. Worked to death modifies Santa Claus further. I mean, how was Santa Claus feeling? Well, Santa Claus was feeling like he was worked to death, comma. That's why this is called a participial phrase. A participial phrase, the first form is using a past participle. In this instance, the past participle is worked. And notice that it's not acting as a verb. This isn't an action somewhere, nor is this part of a clause somewhere. This is a phrase that is attached to an independent clause. Okay? That's one form, the past participle form. Let's take a look at the present participle form. The present participle form of a participial phrase can be seen by looking at a sentence like this. The vampire smiled wryly as he hunched over his prey. Great. We understand that this is also an independent clause. It's a sentence that can stand by itself. But if we wanted to add further detail to what kind of vampire he was or what he was doing, we can create a present participle phrase. Working until dawn, comma, the vampire smiled wryly as he hunched over his prey. Working until dawn here is the present participle form of the participial phrase. Because what was the vampire doing? Well, the vampire was working until dawn. Booyah. This is a participial phrase.
Wonderful. So we have learned phrases and clauses in today's